Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hong Kong U Space uh, Open Day. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to share with you a little bit more about the Portuguese language. Uh, I am Sergio. I am originally from Brazil. And as you can see on the screen, here we have the two major Portuguese speaking countries. Uh, Portugal, of course, uh, and then Brazil. And you can see the little rooster. It's a symbol of Portugal. It comes from a legend that a rooster came back to life to prove that um, a man was innocent. And in our courses, you can get to learn more about Portuguese and Brazilian uh, culture. Here it says, uh, bem-vindos, that means welcome, welcome to the talk. You may have some questions. Uh, I hope to answer some of them, if not all, during my talk. And then towards the end, you can type your questions in the chat box, and then uh, I'll try my best to answer all of them. Do you know these two ladies I have here? You may guess that uh, one of them is a queen. Uh, do you know which country she's the queen of? <laughs> this is uh, Queen Sylvia, the queen of Sweden. And the other one is a pop singer. Maybe some of you like her songs. This is Nelly Furtado. She's a Canadian pop singer. So what? Uh, these two women have in common, Queen Sylvia of Sweden and Nelly Furtado. Um, well, what they have in common is that they are Portuguese speakers. Queen Sylvia uh, is half Brazilian, and uh, Nelly Furtado's parents uh, are from Portugal. So the title of my talk is Portuguese, a Global Language. Uh, most people I talk to don't realize that uh, Portuguese is actually spoken in all continents. Um, it's very widespread because the Portuguese went everywhere. So I like to call it a global language. And I, I am here to share with you a little bit more about some features of Portuguese and also to give you some reasons why you should consider learning Portuguese. So how much do you know about Portuguese? Do you know anyone who speaks Portuguese? Have you been to any Portuguese-speaking country? So Portuguese is part of the Romance family of languages. Um, if you look at my pie chart, so of the Romance languages, the one with the most speakers is Spanish, and right behind is Portuguese, with 26% of all the, the native speakers of Romance languages, so way more than French or Italian. If you speak one of these languages, like Spanish, French, Italian, or you've learned a little bit, then it will be much easier for you to learn Portuguese. Here I have the 10 most spoken languages in the world, and there are only three European languages there, you can see that they are English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So it's among the top 10 most spoken languages. It's also projected to be among the, the top uh, languages in the developing economies. So these are the number of native speakers of languages spoken in developing countries. And it's also one of the most used languages on the internet. You can see here that it's among the top five. Uh, again, you see there's Spanish and uh, Portuguese. Uh, so where is Portuguese spoken? I already told you that it's uh, spoken in Portugal and Brazil. These are the two major Portuguese-speaking countries. But actually, there are a bunch of other places where Portuguese is the official language. Um, we have a few countries in Africa that have Portuguese as an official language, and also here in Asia. Uh, I don't know if all of you are aware of it, but Macau has Portuguese as an official language. Uh, and then we have a small country called Timor-Leste. Um, it's in one of the islands that um, make up Indonesia, 
and it's an independent country, and uh, Portuguese is the official language there. So in terms of native speakers, Brazil has by far uh, the largest number. Um, these uh, numbers, of course, you know, it's like around that. I believe it's it's even more than that right now. So uh, Brazil is uh, the main Portuguese-speaking country, and then Portugal. Uh, even though the number of speak of uh, people, this is population. Yeah? Uh, the African countries have Portuguese as an official language but that's not the number of speakers of Portuguese. Uh, and you can see here that the speakers of Portuguese look very different. Portuguese is spoken in many different regions and by different people, and it truly is a global language. Portuguese has its own day. The United Nations has declared the 5th of May as the World Day of the Portuguese Language to promote and to preserve the culture of the Portuguese-speaking peoples. So it's time to learn Portuguese, and you may ask me, why? Why should I learn Portuguese? What are the reasons that uh, would compel somebody to learn Portuguese? So maybe I can share some with you. Portuguese is one of the official languages of the UNESCO, the organization of the United Nations in charge of education, science, and culture. Portuguese, uh, Portuguese is the, the only language used in Brazil, and Brazil and China uh, have very, um, uh, ver very big uh, um, collaboration in terms of business. So there's a lot happening between Brazil and China, import, export. And uh, so in Brazil, Portuguese is the only language. It's the language of business as well. So learning Portuguese would be an advantage if you work or want to work for a company that exports to Brazil. Portuguese is also the official language in Angola, and uh, of the, the top three trading partners with China in Africa, Angola is number two. So Portuguese is also important in this context. And now I'd like to share with you an article from the Washington Post about the future of language. and. Um, why we should bother learning another language and what language should we bother uh, learning. So he starts by saying that since uh, for Americans, uh, since English and Spanish are so widely spoken, why should you bother uh, to learn a different language? But if you look at the growing economies, um, the population of these countries, uh, by the year 2050, then you see that Portuguese is, again, among the top 10 in terms of um, native speakers. So in terms of business, if you're looking into learning a language for work, Portuguese is a very good choice. Or one reason could be that you would like to uh, immigrate. Uh, Portugal has this golden visa scheme, which offers residency through investment in Portugal. You can get residence in Portugal after five years. If you'd like to apply for full Portuguese citizenship, you have to pass a language test for level A2. So in the European framework for languages, this means you have to study for two years. So our courses can help you prepare. We are not here to teach exam content, but the language that you learn in our courses will help you pass the exam if that's what you're interested in. Or my favorite reason is just because. Learning a language can be fun, can be something to keep your brain young. It helps memory, concentration, 
and you can learn with your friends or make new friends in the classroom. So I would say this is my favorite one. So you may ask me, Sergio, is Portuguese hard to learn? Is it difficult? What is Portuguese like? So if you've had no contact with Portuguese before, um, don't worry, I'll show you that it's not that difficult. And you probably can already recognize a few words in Portuguese. According to a study of the easiest languages uh, to learn for people who speak English, uh, you can see here that the Romance languages are among the easiest. So you have here Portuguese. Uh, it's if you already speak English, then you have an advantage because there's a lot in common in terms of the vocab and um, the grammar, the structure of the language. Uh, I want to show you a few words here in Portuguese, and I want you to have a good look at them. So you may see the typical Portuguese ending for these words, but I think you can sort of guess uh, what they mean, no? If you are with other people, would you like to ask your friends? Have a guess. Do you know what these words here uh, mean? You can uh, change the ending a little bit and you have the English word. So you know that televisão, televisão is the Portuguese word for television. Humano, humano is Portuguese for human. So you just drop a letter and you have the English word. Promoção, promoção. You change the ending a little bit and you have promotion. Música, música. The Portuguese and the Brazilian love uh, música. Especially in Brazil, the samba. So English would be music. And universidade, universidade is Portuguese for university. So you look at this ending, dade e dade. So all the word, almost all the words, I shouldn't say all, <laughs> there might be some exception, but almost all of the words in Portuguese that end in dade, you change that bit for ty and you have the English word. And that is because English has borrowed from French and from Latin. Um, so it has lots of uh, uh, a big vocab that is actually very similar to Portuguese with just a few tweaks here and there. So you probably already know the estimate is around it's over 4,000 words that would fall into like this, this type of situation where you make small changes and you have the Portuguese word. Portuguese also uh, is one of the words to uh, the languages to which you can apply this 80-20 principle. Uh, don't know if you've heard about it. It means you focus on the 20% most common, most frequently used words and phrases in that language. And with that, you would be able to understand about 80% of any conversation or any text. So with a bit of effort, you can understand a lot of Portuguese in a short time. So here at Hong Kong U Space, we offer uh, some options for Portuguese, and I would like to tell you a little bit more about them. We have short courses. These courses last for 10 weeks. They uh, have a total of 30 hours, and they are usually uh, held on Saturday mornings. Uh, it depends, of course, on interest, whether we can run the course or not. For these short courses, we use a textbook published in Macau. So it's geared towards the local context, and um, it's easy to follow. The pace is more uh, is slower, and uh, the idea is uh, an easy, slow introduction to Portuguese. So in uh, level one, 30 hours, you learn how to introduce yourself and how to introduce somebody else. 
So you'd learn how to say your name, your age, your job, where you come from, where you were born, the languages that you speak. Uh, you would learn to talk a little bit about your interests and uh, you would learn how to greet people informally and formally. So this would be level one of the short courses. So it's an easy, nice, slow introduction to Portuguese. Um, here I'm showing you an example from that textbook. So you have a family and you will follow them through different situations and through those situations, you will learn the language and a little bit of the grammar that you need. And we also offer the long courses, the certificate courses. So at the moment, we offer uh, level A1 and level A2, and we also plan to offer level B1. For this course, we use a textbook published in Portugal. So the, the listening materials, the reading, the grammar, it's uh, in European Portuguese. Uh, this course will last for 40 weeks, a total of 120 hours. So 40 meetings, 30 hours uh, every time. Unlike the short courses, this one has exams. Uh, we have a midterm exam and then a final exam. And there is also a speaking exam. Of course, the teachers will prepare you for the exams and uh, will do mock practices, etc. So it's not something you need to worry about. Uh, this course does have a, it covers a lot more of content. So you really need uh, commitment for this one. The Certificate courses um, are under the CEF, so you can claim uh, reimbursement of part of the course fee. For that, you must attend at least 70% of the lessons, and you should pass the assessment. Yeah. For level A1, for example, these are some of the things that you're going to learn how to introduce yourself. So basically, one unit of this course equals roughly the level one of the short courses. You will learn to talk about places in the city. You will learn how to order a coffee uh, or food at a cafe, a restaurant. You will learn to talk about time and travel. Ask people what time is it, tell the time. Uh, buy a ticket for the train, for example. Uh, talk about holidays, where you uh, like to go, when you have a holiday, what you do in your free time. Uh, seeing a doctor, the importance of exercise and things like that. Uh, you will learn a bit about Portuguese culture, for example. Did you know that in Portugal they also have tourada? Tourada is the bullfight. The Portuguese one is quite different than the Spanish one. Um, we will talk about uh, birthday celebrations, uh, how the Portuguese celebrate a birthday, stages in life, I uh, was born in Brazil, I went to university, I studied in the UK, I came to Hong Kong, so you would be able to give a short account of your life experiences. Uh, you will learn how to describe your job, your skills, we will see what a job interview would look like in Portuguese, and then you can learn how to talk about the past. For example, when I was a kid, I lived on a farm, etc. So this is basically the content of the course. Like I said, it's a little bit more uh, demanding, but uh, the pace is um, suitable, I would say, for a, a long course. Uh, of course, uh, you need more commitment for this one. Let me show you an example from that textbook. Yeah, so a short dialogue introducing the structures that we use. So the focus is on communication. You meet someone for the first time. How do you introduce yourself? How do you ask them for personal information? A lot of people ask me, but Sergio, uh, are we going to learn European Portuguese or Brazilian Portuguese? Uh, my answer is we're going to learn Portuguese. 
Portuguese is Portuguese. Yes, there are small differences, uh, mostly in vocabulary, and very few differences in grammar between European and Brazilian Portuguese. The same happens with English, and I'm sure the Cantonese that's spoken in Guangdong is not the same as the one spoken here in Hong Kong, right? There might be small differences, but that doesn't mean we cannot communicate. So my answer is you will learn Portuguese. Portuguese is a global language spoken in different continents, and of course it has different colors, has different sounds, and uh, we'll get exposed to all of them. But the main focus is on European Portuguese because our teaching materials are from Portugal. So going back to that article that I showed you, um, the future of languages, what language to learn. So the answer is there is no single language. You need to think about your interests and why you want to learn a language and then make your decision. How about we learn some Portuguese words now? Your first Portuguese words will start today. I'm going to teach you how to introduce yourself. So you meet someone for the first time and you say, Eu sou o Sérgio. You can repeat after me. Eu sou o Sérgio. Uh, I think you've heard of Cristiano Ronaldo, the, the Portuguese footballer. Uh, so he would introduce himself by saying, Eu sou o Cristiano. And this beautiful lady here is a Portuguese model. Her name is Sara Sampaio. Sara would introduce herself by saying, Eu sou a Sara. So one of the features of Portuguese is that we have uh, gender markers in grammar. So a man would introduce himself by saying, eu sou u, and then the name. But if you are a lady, you say, eu sou a, and then your name. Uh, do you want to say it again with me? Eu sou u, and then your name. Ou eu sou a, and then your name. To say where you come from, you say, Eu sou de São Paulo. Eu sou o Sérgio. Eu sou de São Paulo. If you are from here, you would say, Eu sou de Hong Kong. The H letter at the beginning of a word has no sound in Portuguese. So, Hong Kong becomes Hong Kong. Eu so the Hong Kong. You meet someone for the first time. So now you know how to say your name and where you come from. And then you can say, nice to meet you. In Portuguese, that's muito prazer. Muito prazer. So now you can say, eu sou o Sérgio. Eu sou de São Paulo. Muito prazer. Nice to meet you. To say thank you in Portuguese, men will say obrigado. And if you are a woman, you will say obrigada. So it's actually different depending on who you are. Not who you're talking to, this is who you are. So no matter who you talk to, if you are a man, you say obrigado. If you are a woman, you say obrigada. This word comes from obligation. So it's like we're saying, now I have the obligation to return the favor that you did. So you say obrigado to somebody and they will say, de nada, de nada. That means of nothing. So like there's no obligation. It was nothing. The favor or whatever I did, that was nothing. Obrigado, de nada. The Brazilian and the Portuguese love eating. So here you can see some of the favorites of the Portuguese cuisine. If you've been to Macau, maybe you've tried the bread with the pork. You've tried the seafood. The Portuguese love eating uh, seafood and the Portuguese egg tart. So how do you order that in Portuguese? Let's learn a few words that we could use at a restaurant. 
the Brazilian and the Portuguese love their drink. So let's learn how to say uh, vinho, wine. The Portuguese have the highest consumption of wine per capita in Europe. So they love their vinho, vinho tinto, or vinho verde. Vinho verde is not white wine, it's a specific wine from Portugal, like green wine. Verde means green. Uh, it's, uh, it's specifically from Portugal. It's very nice. You should try if you get the chance. Or many Portuguese people, and the Brazilians especially, love to drink a cerveja. Cerveja. So that's what you can order to drink. We love eating cod. Codfish in Portuguese is bacalhau. Bacalhau. And one of the favorites is this bolinho de bacalhau, which is bacalhau uh, fried. So it's a little... Um, you have dough and bacalhau and spices and then fry that. Uh, it's very good. Com cerveja. Bolinho de bacalhau e cerveja. And then we can have some dessert. We can have some pastel de nata. Pastel de nata is the famous Portuguese egg tart. Uh, you can find them here in Hong Kong. There are some places that uh, sell the original one. There are Portuguese people here selling them. So you can uh, try. Try for yourself. So now I'm going to ask you a few questions. And... You can test yourself. True or false? Verdadeiro ou falso? Portuguese is related to French, Spanish, and Italian. They are in the same family. This is true. Yes. Um, they are related. So if you know a little bit about one of these other languages, you already have a head start in Portuguese. There's a lot in common. Portuguese is one of the ten most spoken languages in the world. Verdadeiro ou falso? True or false? This is true as well. Portuguese is, the numbers vary, so but it's basically the fifth or sixth most spoken language in terms of native speakers. Portuguese is spoken in Europe and South America only. Is that true or false? Verdadeiro ou falso? This is falso. Portuguese is actually spoken in Europe, in the Americas, in Africa, and in Asia as well. Portuguese has many words that are similar to English. If you speak English well, if you know English well, English grammar, that will help you a lot. Verdadeiro ou falso? This is verdadeiro. Uh, there are many words that are very similar, that look almost the same. Sometimes even the spelling is exactly the same. So if you know English, that will help you a lot as well. Most of the words used in Portugal and in Brazil are not the same. Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese are very different. True or false? Verdadeiro? No, falso. Uh, Brazilian and European Portuguese are basically the same language. There are, yes, differences in vocab and some differences in grammar and pronunciation, but it's the same language. Variation is normal in any language. May the 5th is celebrated as the day of the Portuguese language. True or false? True. The United Nations has um, chosen May the 5th as the uh, day of the Portuguese language and culture. This day is celebrated, of course, in all the Portuguese-speaking countries. In Portuguese, men and women say thank you differently. Verdadeiro ou falso? True or false? Verdadeiro. True. So in Portuguese, if you are a man, you say 
Obrigado. Obrigado. If you are a woman, you say obrigada. Obrigada. So this is who you are, not who you're talking to. So if you are a man, you always say obrigado. If you are a woman, you always say obrigada. Do you remember how to answer? If somebody says obrigado to you, the reply will be de nada, de nada. That means it was nothing, of nothing. You are going to sign up for a Portuguese course with Hong Kong U Space. True or false? Eu acho que é verdadeiro. True, 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 true. So, uh, if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can type them in the chat box, and I am happy to answer them. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit more about uh, the teachers that we have. At the moment, we have uh, three teachers in the Portuguese department. Uh, we are all from Brazil. Uh, we are um, all qualified teachers. And the teaching materials that we use are published in Portugal. So in that way, you will get a good sense of Portuguese as a global language, as it's spoken in Portugal, as it's spoken in Brazil. Uh, we follow the Portuguese uh, standard for uh, spelling for grammar pronunciation, so that's what we use in our courses. Um, and other than that, if you have um, any questions you'd like to ask me, please feel free to uh, type them in the chat, and I'll try my best to answer them. We offer uh, Portuguese at our center in Causeway Bay. Uh, Hong Kong Youth Space has a few centers, uh, but Portuguese is only offered at the one in Cause Causeway Bay. It's easily accessible by the MTR or by bus, so most people have no problem uh, getting there. Uh, before COVID, we had plans to organize trips to Macau and um, to places in Hong Kong. There are uh, actually lots of uh, places of um, Portuguese heritage in Hong Kong. Uh, most people don't realize or don't know that there were many Portuguese here. Uh, if you go to the Catholic Cemetery in Happy Valley, uh, the oldest section is almost all Portuguese there. So the names and the uh, things written there, it's all in Portuguese. So we do have activities outside the classroom. Um, but of course, during the, you know, the pandemic, that's changed uh, things a little bit. Um, okay, I'm... Uh, uh, um, one of the questions somebody asked is anything you must try uh, something to eat or visit in Portugal. So if you are thinking of taking a trip to Portugal, uh, there are many things that you should do, many places to visit. But if you are short on time, let's say, then of course you should visit Lisbon, the capital in Lisbon. You should visit Mosteiro dos Jerónimos. Mosteiro is a monastery. Uh, it's one of the main attractions in Lisbon. It's a very old building in a unique style. Uh, there you can learn a lot about Portuguese history, and you can also learn about the when the Portuguese went around the world. Portuguese is spoken in so many places because the Portuguese sailed basically everywhere, and then they would bring back to Portugal all, all these novelties, or to Europe, let's say, because nobody else in Europe was doing that. 
and the Portuguese were the first to arrive in so many places. So if you go to Mosteiro dos Jerónimos in Lisbon, uh, you can see a lot of artifacts that have been there for 500 years now. Uh, it's a very interesting place. And then right there, you can try uh, the Pastel de Nata, which there is called Pastel de Belém. This area in Lisbon is called Belém, B-E-L-E-M, Belém. Uh, and uh, they claim that at that monastery, the monks invented the recipe for the Pastel de Nata. Uh, the egg tart, the Portuguese egg tart, but the secret, uh, the recipe is a secret, even now. So, the one you try in other places is not exactly the same. So, a lot of people go there, the lines are long, but uh, people say it's worth it because it's very unique. Um, I think you should also go to uh, like a typical Portuguese restaurant. And you should try, uh, of course, bacalhau. And if you like seafood, the marisco dishes. And you should listen to fado. Fado, F-A-D-O. Fado is the Portuguese um, national song, let's say. Um, it talks about uh, longing, love. Uh, suffering, missing someone. <laughs> so some people say, oh, it's so sad. But actually, it's very meaningful. And uh, the, the sound of the Portuguese guitar is very unique. Uh, I think that would be a memorable experience for somebody visiting Portugal for the first time. Uh, if you like uh, the beach, Portugal also has some really nice beaches uh, in the south of Portugal in the region called Algarve. Algarve is the southernmost part of Portugal. Uh, the beaches are very nice. And of course, you have Madeira and Açores, which are islands, and have beautiful beaches as well. In the north of Portugal, then if you like wine, for example, you could travel to Porto and the region around Porto. Uh, that region is also very historic because Portugal as a country actually started in the north. Um, the Arabs from northern Africa were in the Iberian Peninsula for over 700 years. So the southern Spain and southern Portugal, that was all under the Arabs. So Portugal actually started in the north and then they went pushing the Arabs down, down, until they pushed them back to northern Africa. Uh, so uh, Porto has a lot of history, that region, the north of Portugal. And if you like nature, it's also a great place to go. There will be a lot for you to do there. Uh, hiking, the Portuguese love hiking too, something they have in common with uh, people here in Hong Kong. There are many trails. And you could go to the small uh, farms, the wineries that make the local wine. So you can try the local wine. Uh, the best time, I would say personally, <laughs> the best time to visit Portugal is right now, June. June is one of the best times to be in Portugal this coming week. Uh, on the 13th of uh, June, actually Monday, um, so on Sunday, there's a huge celebration in Lisbon. It's the Feast of St. John, uh, uh, St. Anthony, sorry. St. John is later uh, in June, and that's in Porto. So St. Anthony, St. John, and St. Peter, these are very popular saints in Portugal, and uh, their days are celebrated in June. So starting now, and then the rest of the month, you have all this uh, great food and music. The streets are all decorated. And uh, there are holidays. Uh, people go out, sing, dance. So this would be a great time to actually be in Portugal. Uh, I have another question. Um, any tips for those people immigrating to Portugal regarding maybe the weather or any cultural differences? 
um, as opposed to Hong Kong that you should be uh, uh, mindful of. Uh, so if you are thinking about moving to Portugal, first of all, um, it is, yes, uh, quite different than Hong Kong, I would say. Um, the Especially in terms of the pace of life, right? Here, uh, everything is basically open almost all the time. Uh, shops, restaurants are open until very late. Weekends, uh, holidays, uh, the MTR takes you everywhere, basically. In Portugal, the pace of life <laughs> is much slower. Uh, the Portuguese are in no rush to go anywhere. So be it at a restaurant, a shop, government department, anything that you need to do, you can expect it to take longer than it takes here. That's, I would say, one of the main differences and that might be a problem for people when they arrive there because um, the way things are done. Yeah? So it's a different pace. And then you, s you should prepare yourself for that. So just take a deep breath and relax, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the environment, enjoy the wait, because the pace is much slower. The weather in Portugal is mostly fine. Um, there is snow in Portugal, but it's only in the north, in a specific region where it's quite high. It's called Serra da Estrela, the, the star mountain, it means. Um, but overall, the weather is fine. There's a lot of sunshine. People call Lisbon uh, the city of light. They say that the light in Lisbon is quite uh, special and different than other places. People love taking pictures there. So overall, uh, the weather is fine and uh, there are no typhoons, so no schools closing because of typhoons or red rain, black rain signals and things like that. It's mostly okay. Another difference is that in Portugal, you don't have these massive buildings, right? Uh, people live in houses or in short buildings and then the neighbors um, like to talk to each other. So after some time, people will be curious or they might want to talk to you um, or help you. So it's more like this, you know, we, we are neighbors, so we should be friends, we should help each other. Um, so you should be maybe open to that. Um, I would say these are uh, the main differences. Uh, if you are in the main cities, then of course, you know, it's uh, similar to other major uh, European cities, of course, right? So in terms of the pace, definitely slower than here, but uh, you will have access to most like international brands, uh, shops, and there are big supermarkets as well. Um, public transport might not be as efficient or convenient as it is here. Um, it's good to have a car. But there's also public transport. In Lisbon, you have the, the metro. In Portuguese, it's metro. Uh, it's easy to get around Lisbon and Porto as well. For other places, a car, or you can travel by train as well. In Portugal, the trains are um, quite efficient. It's uh, an easy, convenient way to travel around. And knowing uh, some Portuguese will help you a lot. The Portuguese in general, in the especially in the big cities, uh, speak very good English. Uh, in general, I would say they are very friendly, and um, you shouldn't have any problem communicating or finding your way around Portugal. But of course, speaking some Portuguese will definitely make living there or traveling there a lot more enjoyable. If you don't have any questions, you can always contact us. Go to the website of Hong Kong Youth Space. Uh, you can find us easily. 
So get in touch, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any other questions that you might have, or if you want to know more about the Portuguese programs at Hong Kong U Space, we're always happy to share information. Thank you so much. Obrigado.